Walker. Huh, that huh, huh, four huh, pointers. Huh, huh, first huh, huh, one. Huh, huh. Hey, by the way, praise the Pat Holberg in his first World Series game. He's been pinpoint tonight. He has. Yep, umpire Pat Hoberg called a perfect game in the World Series, and today's breakdown is brought to you by Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. Let's take a deep dive into what made it so special, what makes him such a good umpire, and all the other umps can learn from it. And look at this. That pitch, the pitcher wants, called as a strike, but it's a ball. In the same at-bat, he gets strike three, and the batter wants it as a ball. And if you take a closer look at both pitches, they are a ball apart, and one found the zone, and the other didn't, and you look at it there, and you're like, all right, good call, Blue. You had it. They weren't in the same spot. They were different. You just got to be consistent. That's what he did all night. According to the ump scorecard from umpscorecards.com, he was perfect. Now, there is a little bit of a buffer zone they have where balls can like go, they can go either way. It just depends on the ump's consistency. And they're saying that he had five balls that kind of went against his own consistency, but still not wrong calls. All the true balls, the true strikes, he called correctly. And I want to show you just what I found. He puts his head right behind the catcher on the batter's side of the plate. You always see umpires go to the batter side of the plate, but he's still finding dead center. Like, he's lined up with the plate. And what I even liked more when I watched this was the dance he does with the catcher. So he's going to react with the catcher, and catchers react really late because they don't want to give away to the hitter where they're setting up. And he's moving late with them. So by the time the ball's coming over the plate, his head is right behind the catcher's head because if the pitcher hits his spot, that's the lane it should be coming down. I thought that was super cool to watch him do this little dance because the catcher goes inside there, and he goes inside with him. He's ready to go outside, but the catcher goes inside. He's like, okay, let me adjust, gets there. Now, this is the worst called game of 2022, and you can see the complete opposite approach where Greg Gibson, the umpire, is not lining up with the catcher. Just his head is so angled, and he has no clue what's happening on the outside part of the plate. Basically just kind of guessing and checking out there because he's not lining up with his catcher to see. And C.B. Buckner, now he was the worst umpire of 2022 in accuracy that called, you know, games all season, and he's doing the same thing. Like, he's just setting up where he's going to set up. Doesn't matter. He's not trying to anticipate what pitch is coming, get a good read on it. Like, that pitch was a strike, and the one before to Alonzo was a ball, and these are the two pitches next to each other, the one on top, Ball, the one below, strike. Just not good. So it's impressive what Hoberg's doing, and he truly cares. While looking at this, I also realized that umpires only call 49.55% of pitches. The rest get swung at. So, you know, 50.5% of pitchers are getting swung at. Umpires don't need to call balls and strikes on that. I just never really thought of it like that. And then when you go a step further and you're like, well, there's a lot of pitches that are just balls. Like anyone could probably call them. Maybe not anyone, but a lot of umpires because they're just off the plate. They're in the waste or the chase zone. And some balls are just right down the middle. They're just strikes. Everybody's getting those, which leaves on average 58 pitches per game in 2022 that umpires had to make a decision on. They were in the shadow zone. They were on the edge. And that's what they get paid for is those 58 pitches. Now, in this World Series game, Pat Hoberg had 44 of these pitches that were on the shadow zone, and that's what I really want to go look at. So first, I was looking on the outside and the inside edge because those don't change batter to batter. That's just the plate. So it's easier to be consistent left and right, inside, outside, because that doesn't change. And he was really consistent on this side of the plate, his right side. So he calls both of those strikes, and if you overlap them, damn consistent. They're both strikes. Now he calls all of these balls, and some of them are as close as you can get, but they are a ball in. This one to Tucker right here, they do say that based off his preferences, the way he was calling buffer zone, this one should have been called a strike, but he called it a ball. So that's one of the five they're saying like, was wrong according to the estimated strike zone. And that one, I don't know if it's high or inside, but look when you overlay these, they are a ball different. And the ones on the inside got called strikes, and the ones on the outside got called balls. And he set up that line all game and, and stayed true to it.
which I think is all hitters really want. Is like, just get it there. Even when a righty was up, that side of the plate, he was pretty dialed in. Those were both called strikes. That one is called the ball. This one's a little out, called the ball. And then this one is uh, kind of low and outside, and they're saying that he called that one different than his preferences. That was one of the ones they said, according to how he called the rest of the game, he probably should have called that a ball. But look at that. Those are, but those are both strikes. Two different pitches from two different arm slots, but yeah, they're there. So it's nice to have consistency. Now these, one's a ball and one's a strike. And yeah, they are different when you compare them. Same with this. One's a ball, one's a strike, and yep, they're like a ball apart. So he was really consistent. And then let's take a look at the other edge of the plate. Now, he didn't get a lot of calls there. That one he called a strike, and this is also one of the five that they're saying based on his zone, that's probably a ball. But Bohm kind of steals strikes as a batter a lot. I want to go into that a little bit because I was watching that. Now, this is the inside to righties with a lefty pitching. And again, calls that a strike, calls that a strike, and calls this one a strike, and that one a ball. And when you line up the three strikes, they're all, you know, doing the same dance as they cross the plate. But this is where I'm talking about that. Maybe the batter stole this ball because these pitches are really similar. Now, if you're going to go really fine-tuned, the one that is a little more inside did get called a ball, while the one a little more over the plate got called a strike. But they're really similar, and I wonder if Bohm sticking his ass out like that helps sell to the umpire that that was inside, where Castellanos just stays still, keeps his legs right where they were, and that, you know, I wonder how much the batter can affect the call by doing that stuff. Later on, it seems like something like that happens as well. Now let's look at low and high. There wasn't that many high pitches, and low was, uh, it's interesting, because this changes batter to batter. So that's a strike, and Bohm can't believe it. And yes, that's one of the five pitches that they say, yeah, he probably, that goes against how he called the rest of the game. And that one's a ball. So if you take a look at both of those overlaid, again, we got Castellanos and, and Bohm up, and Bohm's back knee is really bent to the ground on the right side. And Castellanos, he stays upright. Now, these pitches are, they're really similar, and they go different ways. And these batters are similar heights. And I wonder, again, if if Bohm gets that strike called on him because he drops his knee, if that comes into play at all. I, I, I doubt it really does. I don't know if the umpire can look at his knee mid-swing. But maybe, but maybe. Keep going on the low strikes. We got McCormick up, and that one gets called a strike. You got two catchers that really frame the ball. That one gets called a strike. This one, that's uh, Diaz, that's called a strike. Castellanos, that one's called a strike. He doesn't agree with that. And Hoskins, that one's called a strike. They're all similar, so that's the line, right? But then this one, Therese, is called a ball, and the Astros really wanted that. Let's take a look at the two pitches to McCormick. Same batter, same height, pitches thrown, and same spot. So they're both called strikes. Now, these were called differently to Hoskins. One's called a ball. One's called a strike. Same height batter. And if you look at it, you know, they're very similar, but one maybe catches the edge and the other doesn't because the calls are consistent with where the balls are. The one higher up called a strike. The one lower called a ball. Very similar. But that was what he was doing. It's crazy impressive. And after spending a lot of this week looking at all this footage, watching the pitches, comparing it to other umpires, came away with uh, something that I already knew. Umpiring is really, really hard. Shouldn't really make old men do it. And when you got younger guys like Pat Hoberg who can do it perfectly, put them behind the dish more often. Why are we wasting days where this guy just does second base or down the line in the postseason, which is basically just going fair, foul, the whole crowd can do that. That's a waste of Pat Hoberg's time. Put him behind the dish. Let the players rely on him. Let them feel secure. You want reliability? Go to Rocket Money. It's a personal finance app that allows you to manage and cancel unwanted subscriptions, lower your bills, and build custom budgets all in one place. To save more and spend less, join the 3.4 million members using Rocket Money. Head to rocketmoney.com slash breakdown to get started for free. Cancel all them subscriptions. Cancel all the umpires that stink behind the dish. 
Rework the system until the robots come. You should have tried. That's the biggest thing. As umpires, you should have tried something new before the robots come. And why did no one ever say, why don't we just use the guys that are good at calling balls and strikes behind home plate? Why do we have to do this rotation thing? Seems easy.